Righto. I have landed in New Zealand. I've just hired a vehicle. And uh, one thing I want to do in this video is show you just how easy it is to go hunting in New Zealand. I've got a bunch of public land. There's my backpack and my gear in the back there, my bow and everything. And uh, I'm loaded up. Just, yeah, just grab the hire car. It's just a, just a small hire car. And uh, I'll literally just go and park at one of these trailheads and uh, I'll have about a million acres or more of public land to run around on. Go and hunt tar, chamois, red deer. There's, there's a bunch of hunting in New Zealand. It's so cool. So I'm gonna keep you posted. Just got a couple of last minute things. I needed some gators, especially with the snow being pretty heavy. I've got a few more backcountry meals and gas because we can't fly with that, obviously. So just grabbed some supplies, I had to grab some gas canisters obviously and uh, I had to grab a pair of bloody, what do you call them things you put around your feet, legs, gaiters, I had to grab a pair of gaiters and uh, pretty deep snow so gaiters are going to be come in pretty handy and now I'm just going to go to the grocery store, I'm just going to grab uh, some, you know, some health bars and things like that that I can stuff in my pack and then by the time I drive to the base of the mountain it'll be dark tonight so I'll probably just sleep in the vehicle. If I've got half hour or an hour I'll just get a head start on it and it'll sort of help. Um, but uh, yeah I should be definitely walking into the mountains by tomorrow morning bright and early if not tonight. Oh and I'm glad that I thoroughly cleaned and scrubbed all of my hunting gear and got grass seeds out of my backpack and binder harnesses and freaking pretty much all my gear because um, customs absolutely grilled me when I was uh, coming coming through at Christchurch Airport. They, um, they went over everything, they absolutely cleaned out every one of my bags, they looked through every pocket, they looked at knives, broad heads, they looked at socks, they looked at friggin everything. So. Um, not that you get in trouble anyway as long as you declare it then uh they'll just obviously they'll actually go and clean it for you but i'm glad that i pre-cleaned everything before i came out because um yeah it saved a bit of a headache in there that's like the last of the goodies there now that's a couple of meat pies for on the road a few hours of driving yet and uh yeah just like high protein bars things like that Wet one. Yeah, looking good. Well, first night didn't quite pan out how I liked. I'm sleeping in the back of the car. I've had road closures. I've had uh, the big uh, customs inspection at the airport, which is all good. That's what they're supposed to do i'm not complaining about that but it's it did take about an hour and 20 minutes stuffed around with the hire car and um basically everywhere that i've tried to go in so far uh there's road closures and i can't even get remotely close to um the areas that i want to be in so anyway it's ended up being it's 20 past midnight now so i've just um Rolled the sleeping bag in the pad out in the back of the car. I'll sleep here for the night. And uh, I'll get up in the morning and start working on another plan and have a look, a bit, a little bit of a look over how much snow and everything's on the, the Alps that are sort of, that I'm below at the moment. Anyway, it's fucking awesome to be in New Zealand. <laughs> That's the main thing. So this is like uh, the Westlands of New Zealand. This is over on the West Coast. I've got the coast just out to the right of me now and uh, you'll be able to see most of that country it's all impenetrable you just cannot get through there it's as simple as that so um, you usually got to take a river sort of got to take a river I want to end up way on the back there where those um, big snowy tops are so I've just got to find a river and a path to get into that back country and then sort of head up one of the spurs or one of the little creeks get up to the tops that's where the tar will be they'll be up top but um yeah it's, it's pretty good back there they did do a big chopper cull through this area 
uh, the Wadarawa rivers like the next one along <laughs> they did a big chopper cull through this area a little while ago but apparently they only shot nannies and young ones so they still should be bull targeting around um, but right now I'm sort of more interested in trying to get onto a chamois um, I've got a couple of good bull tar spots um, one's on the in the southern alps on the other side of the south island and uh, i've got a good tar spot on this west side as well but um right now i just want to get in there and have a look for a chamois probably a bit of luck find one on the climb up where the helicopters sort of didn't get into as much but um we'll see we will see how pretty is new zealand eh it's fucking insane Walking around smiling. Every step you take. This is a dangerous one. That's where I want to end up. Over the back there. Feels like I've already been hiking for a day and I haven't gotten any closer. <laughs> Couldn't ask for better weather in New Zealand. Far out. That water is so bloody clear. <laughs> oh. And cold. I swear the water in New Zealand's just got the best taste to it. It's just, I don't know, it's just better than anywhere in the world that I've drank. Um. It's like the most stupidest way to explain it, but it's just like the most watery flavored water there is. No, it is absolutely delicious and beautiful. Probably all the fucking 1080 that the New Zealand government drops. <laughs> no, it's definitely good. Choking. Crazy tops on him. I wonder if that was a looks like a really old stag. Oh no, it's not. It's got two high coronets. Cool. Very cool spiker. Probably got 1080 poisoned or something. Put him in the sun there. Get a better look at him. Very cool. just starting to really turn into a tight little canyon and the rocks were getting bigger and the, you know because of the tide of the water sort of rushing down a lot further and I'd already slipped over once and sort of bashed my knee this whole side of my body soaked smashed my elbow and freaking cracked my hand but I'll recover it's no no major one but yeah I'd get off there before it got too dangerous and I'm coming up through this country it's all freaking beautiful like check that out <laughs> 
every bit of New Zealand is freaking stunning. But um, yeah, it doesn't look like there's any rubber vine up through here, so well, not a lot anyway. So I should be able to move up here and hopefully find a red deer game trail or something that's going to head up towards the spur on the top. Yeah, I'll, I'll cruise up through there as long as it doesn't bluff out. There's no um, no tracks or anything through here. This is an area that I've never heard of people sort of walking into or from. I'm sure there has been, but I've just never heard of it. But um, there is tons of walking trails in New Zealand that you can hike and hunt from, which are really good, but I just, I don't know, it's a bit of explorer in me, I suppose, it's gonna be fuck going where everyone else goes. Try something new. Starting to get a bit of height now, but I'm still only, I don't know, halfway up until, until it flattens out and I'll be able to just to have a set of camp. I have to go an hour or so in the port, but it's lighter, I just wanna get through the worst of this first. I don't wanna be walking around here in the dark, so. Put in the foot down a little bit. I can, but it's not the it's not the greatest country to be racing around in. I told myself this trip, you know, don't be don't be so brave that you won't turn back. You know, it looks no good going up higher. Or if you start dropping down, it starts bluffing out like I did last year. Instead of trying to get through it, you just turn around, find an easier way. Well, definitely not the ideal sleeping spot, but um, it's the only little sort of flat patch that I can find on the mountain. I've still got about, I don't know, a good part of the day to get to the top where the tar and the chamois will be. I'm just going to clear out a little flat spot here. I just won't even peg the tent out really. I'll just tie it off on one of these old branches and trees. Just to keep a bit of moisture off me during the night. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. That might be my pillow there. And I'll just lay some of those under the tent, keep a bit of mud off it. Just for packing it up and keeping it light in the morning. boots off and I've got these little down booties so little things make you a little bit more comfortable wake up in the morning with dry feet feel very nice after a big day all today was was just climbing for thick shit all day Hopefully, I get to a spot where it doesn't get hit a lot. And uh, that little effort of climbing all that way pays off. Zippers, zippers always struggle in these conditions. That's the second night in New Zealand. It's a bit of a rough spot, but... um like the only little clearing, not clearing, it's the only little divot that I could find that I could sleep in. Just set up camp there in the dark last night and yeah, now I've got a bit of um, a bit of good light. I can continue hiking. It's really hard to tell sort of where to go. All I know is that there's clear tops up there. Probably another kilometre climb. I'm gonna start packing her up and just slowly work my way up through this jungle. She's climbed up. 
just to get the first view of what I'm heading into. Certainly looks good. Still a long way to go, but um, it's sort of opening up a little bit. Well, it's still hellish, but, <laughs> but just compared to what I've been through, it doesn't look as bad. It doesn't seem as bad. like those little spots like that just for a shimmy Probably as good a spot as any for camp. It's a um, nice little flat spot and uh, there's like plenty of snow and a bit of ice around that I can boil up and get water from. Well, this is camp, there's not much to it. Um, just got a little solar panel there that I'll set up in a minute. Crampons, spot and scope, bow and arrows, backpack, water bottle, got some spare arrows, got some little cooker. I'll tell you the reason why I use this one. Let me take those socks out there for now. There's a little ceramic burner that goes in there. You can actually cook over the top with that. Um, just what, like with meat on a stick or something like that, so it's pretty handy. But the main reason I have that one, and it boils water in two seconds flat, is you can, look how you can fit your hand in there. You can grab big chunks of snow and throw them in there and stuff like that. And that, that one's a lot better. It's like a MSR reactor or something like that. Just runs off one of these little gas cylinders. Um, you've got to try and keep these warm, eh, because uh, 
Oh, there's a big dent in that one from a fella over down in the bloody creek. Um, because the, the gas stops working if they get too cold, it just doesn't come out of there, it doesn't liquefy, and um, well, it li liquefies too much, obviously. But um, yeah, you've got to try and keep them sort of warm, so I usually sleep with that overnight. I've got my mattress, all my spare clothes, uh, sleeping bags there. I keep everything I want to keep dry, I keep in that tent there, or I keep in this dry bag here. Dry bag's got all my food at the moment. Um, main reason I picked this spot is you can't see it now, but there's a great vantage point. You could get up in the morning, glass from right here, try and pick up. I mean, you can't visibility shit at the moment, but you can't see crap. But there's also plenty of snow that I can melt to drink. And there's these little frozen sections through here, which um, I might be able to bash through and find some liquid on the bottom of. We'll see. Anyway, that's the end of uh, day two. I've only got a half an hour of light left or so. I'm just gonna spend that time um, collecting some water and if the clouds blow through, I'm just gonna glass from here and tomorrow morning I'll get back to it. Now, I've gotta dry my boots out because uh, when I was walking along there, I found a big puddle and they're literally full of water, which is uh, definitely not ideal. But back here in the winter. I've got these waterproof socks that I carry into the back country. It's like they're like a wetsuit material sort of sewn in. Um, those boots are absolutely drenched. Like I said, not ideal for these conditions. But um, I'm just gonna go out for an afternoon walk. I'll wear these uh, wetsuit socks inside those boots, very handy in the back country. And uh, I'll be wearing them out for the next few days, I guess. I just pulled it out, inspected it, and just had a shot into a, a bush down there at 45 yards, and it's cracked it perfect, so that's uh, comforting. I just um, keep a string cover on this year because your bow gets smashed around up here so bad and uh, I know last year I smashed my bow but that was because I dropped it off the mountain but um just it took a lot of other damage during the trip so yeah just a little bit of peace of mind that's about spot on Oh shit. Not really any sign down here. I can't pick up on any prints or anything in the snow. But it looks ideal. Well, that's day two in the book. I've definitely reached the better country, better hiking country, better glassing country. There's very little sign that I've seen in here or water yet. We'll see if I go and do it. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna pack up camp and haul it probably another, I don't know, another half a day to a full day up that way, back further into the mountains. It just, there's just no sign out here. And uh, if there continues to be no sign, I'll at least start from scratch. Like how the hiking is going so far. But how friggin' beautiful is this place? Definitely, definitely on top of the world here. It's like really good shit. I've just been glassing for the last hour and uh, haven't picked up on a chamois or a tar anywhere. I haven't even looked into the country that I can't even walk into it. It's so bluffed.
all the way to as far as it looks like they can drop down safely and I just, yeah, there's just no animals around at all. I think at this point I've got to try a completely different, completely different basin or side. So I think if I gain a little bit of elevation going further up the ridge that way and drop off on the backside, I'll have a good look down in there. There's no game down in there, then whatever these sort of hunts aren't necessarily about getting game. <laughs> they're, sort of, they're more mountaineering sort of camping and just enjoying the whole adventure. So I'm not too fussed, but I am going to try my damn hardest to try and find a Tara or a Shemi still. And uh, if that doesn't work out down there, then I'll probably, probably uh, bivouac my way back out. It'll take a couple of days. And it will leave me with a couple of days to go into another spot and check it out. But yeah, there's no game here, but there's also, there's not a sign of humans. Seen here, so that's why I just want to come up here and, you know, feel like you're the only one around. actually a ridge line there looks like you could nearly climb down that one down into that main river just depends if it bluffs off down there it's probably not a bad way to walk out It'd be better than the way that I come in the way that I came in it's too steep to go down it's a big pack on sign up here I think I might set up camp down here somewhere get this weight off me back and then I can sort of explore into these crevices a bit more have a look through there look over those edges So that's me second camp set up. Spare arrows come in handy, that snow is that bloody deep that it's the only thing that's gonna hold that tent up if a big wind comes through. So I've got the little solar panel charging. 
just boiling a bit of water now trying to dry out a little bit of stuff I don't think that's gonna happen today but anyway spot and scope up there there's a nice little vantage point there but unfortunately the clouds have moved in so sort of best option now is just to sneak around on some track if I can find since I can't glass up camp set up it's all ready to roll uh, yeah visibility is really dropping at the moment I'm just gonna go and put my solar panel up here if this sun does start to pump a little bit I'll get a little bit of charge unfortunately uh, just about all my batteries are dead just the, the cold suck the life out of them hopefully I can get a little bit of charge into this one Come on out, old mate. These little guys can be good company. It's good to see them, actually. actually get to them unfortunately there's another chevy out here on this ridge i can't see around the side to see if i can climb down there and get to him oh. yeah sometimes it's just not worth the risk and that's that's pretty hellish getting down there and back you can't see but straight underneath me it's just all sheer rock The real one that goes like that. It's just a full white out. It's like hard to see. Just 
sort of hunting these little crevices hoping to find one like feeding there or like somewhere that you can get to you can see that they've like walked in and out of there nothing super fresh maybe the weather or just the season or something's pushing them low gas bottle just froze over and stopped working so we just quickly took the hot element off and uh, stuck the gas bottle on top of that just to get some heat into it and I've just wrapped it up in a pair of pants there now try and keep it insulated a bit otherwise it's not going to boil that water that is must be getting close now come on baby don't do that morning up here in the Alps. Uh, so incredible. Last night was freezing, everything inside that tent froze solid. It's just sucked the life out of every bit of battery that I've got. So apologies. Would have been nice to turn off from recording and everything for a little while. Oh, what a place. <laughs> These guys seem to stay pretty warm up here. batteries and these little shits keep ripping apart your solar panel. You know I'm a hunter, right? I'm lucky to be protected otherwise I'd be eating it for dinner tonight. Clothes dry today. Damn mountain parrots keep picking out everything. Oh, 
love watching these birds, even though they're a complete pain in the ass. They're just so curious. Just sat in the tent there to defrost in the morning sun and I'm just gonna walk back up at the top of this mountain and glass off that side there. I'm just gonna throw a bit of weight in it so it can't blow away. So yeah, he just flew straight over, started sucking it out. Boots pretty much dried out last night. You would have seen I stuck those heat packs in there, which they hardened up. They drew a lot of the moisture out and some tissue or toilet paper, I should say. They're still slightly damp on the inside, but it's about 98% better than it was. It's a beautiful day. that saddle and that sort of went up there yesterday and it crests way out like there's a big canyon between this point here and that next point Bugger. fuck they're a magnificent creature that bull just walked out behind that other bull. Got tar wherever. Way back up, back up on that knob there. And there's two good bulls in there as well. But um, I looked at all that yesterday and there's just no way of getting, there's just no way of getting to that ridge there. There's a big canyon in there. and dry. 
door. Got me bow on there, a bunch of arrows. Trying to work out which rocky draw to drop into. Not too bad just here, but uh, I think once I drop down a little bit further, that ice is going to harden up, so I might just pull up, put the crampons on. Better off putting them on early than too late. getting there.
just had a big shimmy come up the gut through there, I rushed me bow off, dropped me pack because it's on the bow. And it looked like it hit him perfect. Only, only five or six yards away. Oh, wow. Wow, my friends, wow. Ah, oh, they can run so fast. They, they scale this mountain like you wouldn't believe. Jumping all over it. Ah, oh, oh, nearly, nearly positive that shot was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Oh, I can see blood everywhere. He's definitely. scattered all over the mountain there. You can see it, it goes through there, all up there. Ah, oh, beautiful chamois too, beautiful coat. And we're gonna be eating meat tonight. And when I say where, I'm being me. Oh, I've been craving meat so bad. That's such a... Uh, such a good feeling of accomplishment here. But it's also like... Uh, there's the kings of these Alps, you know. Anyway, at least I got it done in a good way. Yeah, so I, I literally, I literally dumped me pack because I seen this buck, I seen that buck chamois standing right there and they're such a curious animal that as soon as he seen my head and we come in eye contact, I stopped and then I just moved my head a little bit like that to give him a bit of a look and I seen him trotting along and there's probably like two big ravines in there but I know how fast they run. I dropped my pack as fast as I could unclipped me bow, pulled that out, unclipped me quiver, clipped the quiver in, there's arrows falling out everywhere. The first arrow that fell out was one of these, it's a new, new Ozcut Hurricane, stuck that on the string and then turned this way and that buck was standing right there. Now that's about nine yards away just there. Then I had this stupid thing that protects the string. And you learn lessons, and I learned it years ago, but that cost me a good deer a few years ago. But the other thing is it protects your string, so maybe it saves the whole hunt, but that's clipped on. There's one button on it that's still clipped there. I'm in this stare off. You can see his prints right there in the snow. He's standing there just staring at me, and I can't fucking move. Not even an inch. And I reckon it was a good five minute stare off, which felt like about an hour. And he turned and I unclipped that button and he looked back at me again. And then I had to turn my wrist, slink, I had to turn me bloody wrist release around because it was on the back of my hand. And he just walked that little bit further and I clipped it on and he was looking down there. And I come to the full draw, he looked back at me and I just pegged him right there. Shot looked perfect, there's blood everywhere on the snow. Oh, amazing. Now, I'm not going to even attempt to carry this thing out of here. I'm in one of the worst spots. One of the best but worst spots. Um, and it's two days to hike in. I think I'm going to call the chopper and get a airlift out of you tomorrow I'll process him now and be all ready and get a chopper out of you tomorrow I have to try and find somewhere that they can land
That'll save boiling any water tonight. That's crystal clear, eh? As it should be. Just gonna have a drink and I'll follow that buck up. I don't think he would have gone far. That's how I hit him. Him. Slid back down the creek and died. Oh, he didn't go far. Looks like he only ran to there and slid down. Oh, that's a good way to have Seen where he is. I just want to follow it up just to see how far he travelled. It's a bit of peace of mind when you know how quickly they died. Yeah. That's from the new Ozcut Free Blade Hurricane for the off set. And the blade and so I shot him there it's about 20 yards away so yeah around 20 yards come to here crash down into the creek and because I was down in the creek shooting straight up on an angle I dare say that arrow it's probably in the ocean somewhere. There's no chance of finding it. Let's go and see this beauty. Oh, I'm so stoked. Little, nice little chamois. Oh, that's so cool. The yeah, shot was perfect for the blades. Those tiny little hooves. <laughs> and now I'm to 
to run all over these mountains, hey? I was watching this morning, like, way off into a dirty big drawer over there. It just looked like a sheer cliff. And there was five bucks just running back and forth, going crazy all over it, skipping around flat out. They thrive in it. It's incredible. And I don't know how they stay warm. Their hide's really not that thick. Just a beautiful animal, eh? And the bucks, they've got these funny little scent glands up here above their head, between their horns, which is really cool. Yeah, what a beautiful little animal. And they just sport these little horns, but they're so cool. And they're pretty tasty. I'm gonna cook up one of these back straps tonight. I brought um, a little bit of spice with me, which is handy. Uh, try and find a flat place to camp before, before it gets dark. Well, that hide is thick. That's a full skin on his head. Check out how rich this meat is. <laughs> how good does that look? Well, all loaded up. Just gonna make me way down this creek and find a flat spot to camp somewhere out of the wind there's supposed to be big winds tonight the creek's getting a lot steeper and narrower too just take me time that's going to be base for the night this little flat in front of us a dish achievement flat ground here at all to the chisel a little square out of there to sleep in during the night so I don't slip out of the bed and I'm just gonna cut out a little section for a fire uh, cook up some duck strap tonight be pretty yum Get a decent night's sleep so I can function tomorrow. Sort of want to be at your full potential in this stuff. It's not looking too bad. 
out there now. Just got a nice triangle to sleep in. It's about the size of my mattress, a little bit bigger. Just cleared a little section out there where the vestibule is. And I'll just have a little fire there tonight. I'll climb down in a minute. I'll uh, throw some rocks in my backpack. Bring them back up and I might try and cook on a bit of slate rock. Should be nice and yummy. There's only the remotely flat spot on this part of the hill. Just chiseled that out, sat the bed in there. Seems to have done the trick. Solar panel, there's no sun out, but you get the drift, my friends. But what a landscape to be camped in. Sure, it's going to be just as cold as last night. I'm quite happy with that. Stayed warm. It was probably a couple of other things I could have done. Get a little bit warmer. Put like a scarf on, maybe a down jacket, things like that. Wasn't necessary, just slept in long johns for the night. There's one buck shamming, he's like up in there. I'm not even concerned, but it's just nice looking at him with the binos every now and then. 